टुडे वी विल लर्न चैन सर्वाइंग ऑब्जेक्टिव टू प्लॉट अ स्मॉल एरिया बाई चैन सर्वाइंग थ्योरी इट इज़ अ मेथड ऑफ सर्वाइंग इन विच द एरिया टू बी डिवाइडेड इन टू अ नंबर ऑफ ट्रैंगल्स द लेंथ ऑफ द साइट्स आर मेजर्ड एंड द इंटेरियर डिटेल्स आर रिकॉर्डेड द होल एरिया इज देन प्लॉटेड ऑन अ ड्रॉइंग सीट टू अ सुटेबल स्केल टू प्रिपेयर अ मैप टू डिवाइड अ स्मॉल एरिया इन टू अ नंबर ऑफ ट्रैंगल्स मेजर द परपेंडिकुलर डिस्टेंस ऑफ सेट्स ऑफ वेरियस ऑब्जेक्ट्स इन द फील्ड फ्रॉम द लाइन एंड रिकॉर्ड इन द फील्ड बुक फ्रॉम विच द एरिया कैन बी प्लॉटेड ऑन अ ड्रॉइंग सीट टू अ सुटेबल स्केल Significance chain survey is the simplest and commonest method used in surveying exercises because of its ease of use it is used during reconnaissance survey as a quick method to get a rough idea in the location to be surveyed after participating in this field work students will become more comfortable with handling chain and ranging routes they will be more aware to obstacles in chaining and ranging and will learn to overcome the difficulties in chaining and ranging instruments first chain engineer's chain second tape third arrows fourth ranging rod fifth offset rod sixth optical square seventh wooden hammer eight field book ninth pencil procedure The entire procedure for chain surveying can be divided into three major groups: a. field work, b. keeping of records in the field book, c. plotting of data to prepare maps. a. field work. It includes reconnaissance, selection of station, measurement of lines, and taking offsets of different objects in the field. One reconnaissance. Before starting the actual survey measurement the surveyor will work around the area to fix the base position of survey lines and survey position during the reconnaissance the surveyor will prepare a rough sketch of the area showing the possible stations and from there the arrangement of different lines two selection of station the station should be marked by driving wooden pegs if possible every station should be located with respect to three permanent objects Three measurement of lines and taking offsets. After selecting survey station, the chaining will be started from baseline. Two ranging rods are fixed on the two station in a survey line, and distance is measured with chain. The chain should be properly stretched so that no sag in it. As the measurement proceeds, offsets are taken on both sides of the survey lines and recorded in the field book. Offsets should be taken in order of their chainages. In this way all the lines including tie and check lines are measured and offsets taken and recorded in the field book B keeping of records in the field book all the details including a rough sketch of different types of stations offsets etc in a field are recorded in a book called field book the record keeping starts from the bottom of the end page of the field book C plotting of data to prepare maps before plotting the details of chain survey on a drawing paper a suitable scale should be chosen first because drawings are prepared to reduced scale the triangle is first plotted from its known sides according to a suitable radius scale then tie lines and check lines are drawn and check the accuracy of the work now offsets like building trees electric post etc lines are taken up one by one types of chains first Engineer's chain, hundred feet long, hundred links, one feet per link. Second, Gunter's chain, sixty-six feet long, hundred links, zero point six six feet per link. Third, metric chain. Fourth, revenue chain. Fifth, steel band or band chain. Field book. Field book is an oblong book hinged at the narrow edge having a chain represented in it either by one or two red or blue lines ruled down the center of the length of each page check lines these lines are selected to check the accuracy of the plotted network of triangles it drives the apex of a triangle to some fixed point on the opposite side this can be any other lines also such as joining two fixed points on the sides of the triangle the measured length should agree with its length on the plotted plan tie line 
tie line is selected to pass closure to the details which are otherwise away from the main survey lines to avoid long offsets. This can also be used as a check line at the same time. Offsets Offsets are lateral distances measured from the survey lines to the objects or features which are plotted. They can be on either side in the chain. There are two types. First, perpendicular offsets. Second, oblique offsets. Well proportioned triangle. There is equal liability of error in all the sides of a triangle. The base form is equilateral triangle. In any case, to get a well proportioned triangle, no angle should be less than 30 degree. The following points should be borne in mind. First, the number of stations should be minimum and as far as possible, they should form well conditioned triangle. Second, intervisibility of stations should be checked. The framework must have one or two baselines. If possible, a baseline should pass through the center of the area on which the main network will be based. If two baselines are used, they must intersect in the form of letter X. Fourth, the lines should be arranged in such a way that the offsets are short in length. If necessary, additional lines should be selected to achieve this objective. Fifth, the main lines should form well-conditioned triangles. Sixth, each triangle or portion of the skeleton should be provided with sufficient check lines. Seventh, the lines should be selected in such a way as to avoid obstacles in chaining and ranging as far as possible. Eight, lines should pass over level ground if possible. Errors in chaining It is always very difficult practically to measure length accurately. The permissible error with a steel tip is 1 in 2000 in a flat country and 1 in 1000 for a rough undulated country. The errors may be either cumulative or compensating. A cumulative error is that which occurs in the same direction and tends to accumulate, while a compensating error may occur in both directions and tends to compensate or cancel one another. Errors are regarded as positive or negative accordingly when they make the result too great or too small. First, erroneous length of chain or tape cumulative, positive or negative. The error due to wrong length of the chain is always cumulative and is the most serious. As stated earlier, if the length of the chain is more, the major distance is less, the error is negative and the correction is positive. On the other hand, if the length of the chain is less, the major distance is more, the error is positive and the correction is negative. However, it is possible to apply proper correction if the length is checked from time to time. Second, Bad ranging, cumulative, positive. If the chain is stretched out of the line, the major distance will always be more and hence the error will be positive. For each stretch of the chain, the error will be cumulative and effect will be too great a result. Third, careless holding and marking, compensating, positive, negative. The follower may sometimes hold the handle to one side of the arrow and sometimes to the other side. The leader may not insert the arrow vertically into the ground or exactly at the end of a chain. The error of marking due to an inexperienced chainman is often of a cumulative nature but with ordinary care such error tend to compensate. Fourth, bad straightening. Cumulative positive. If the chain is not straight, the major distance will always be too great. The error is therefore of cumulative character and positive. Fifth, non-horizontality. Cumulative positive. If the chain is not horizontal, especially in case of sloping or irregular land, the major distance will always be too great. The error is therefore of cumulative character and positive. Sixth, sag in chain. Cumulative positive. If distance is measured by stepping or when the chain is stretched above the ground due to undulation of ground, the chain sags and takes the form of catenary. The measured distance is therefore too great and the error is cumulative and positive. 7. Variation in temperature. Cumulative, positive or negative. When a chain or tape is used at a temperature which is more than the temperature at which it was calibrated, its length increases. The measured distance is thus less and the error becomes negative. When a chain is used at a temperature which is less than that at which it was calibrated, its length decreases. 
द मेजर डिस्टेंस इज दस मोर एंड द एरर इज पॉजिटिव इन आइदर केस द एरर इज कॉम्बलेटिव एट वेरिएशन इन पुल कंपनसेटिंग प्लस माइनस और कॉम्बलेटिव प्लस और माइनस If the pull applied in stretching a chain or tape is not equal to the standard pull at which it was calibrated, its length changes. If the pull applied is irregular, that is sometimes more and sometimes less, the error tends to compensate. However, an inexperienced chain man may apply too great or too small a pull every time and the error becomes cumulative. Ninth, personal mistakes. Personal mistakes always produce quite irregular effects. The most common mistakes are first, displacement of arrows. If an arrow is disturbed from its position either by knocking or by pulling the chain, it may be replaced wrongly. The error may be a serious one. To avoid this, a cross must be marked at the point at which the arrow is inserted. Second, miscounting chain or tape lengths. This is a serious blunder but may be avoided if a systematic processor is adopted to count the number of errors. Third, misreading the chain or tape. A confusion is likely between reading a 5 meter tally or a 15 meter tally, since both are of similar shape. A chainman may pay more attention on the centimeter reading on the tape and make the meter reading wrong. A surveyor may sometimes read 6 in place of 9, or 12.46 in place of 12.64, these type of mistakes may be sometimes very serious. Tenth, erroneous booking. The surveyor may enter 246 in place of 264 etc. To avoid such possibility, the surveyor should first speak out the reading loudly and the surveyor should repeat it while entering in the field book. Corrections for linear measurements. We have seen the different sources or errors in line measurement. For most of the errors, proper corrections can be applied. In ordinary chaining, however, corrections are not necessary, but in important and precise works, corrections must be applied. Since in most of the case a tape is used for precise work, the corrections are sometimes called as tape correction, though they can also be applied to the measurements taken with a chain. For precise measurement, the following corrections are made. First, correction for standardization, second, correction for slope, third, correction for temperature, fourth, correction for pull or tension, fifth, correction for sag.